Yes, lads, welcome back to the new season of the Everton Career Mode. We've got a lot going on in today's episode and we've got a shitload of money to spend. We're going to see how much we've got later. We've got the first pre-season tournament to try and get a, like an extra 8 million, but that's irrelevant. We'll see how much money we've got because we've got an absolute mountain buttload of cash. So, um, first bit of business, as I say, we're going to see the uh, pre-season tournament we've got. We've got Inter, Villarreal and Borussia Dortmund. We're going to try and get a little bit of extra money. We've got a manager rating of 97 and we'll see the season objectives. So the board are asking us quite extensively, as in last season as well, because they want a top six last season. They want top four again this season at the very minimum, but would really like to win the Premier League for a back-to-back -back season. I think to set some sort of foundations, I'm guessing. I, I, I don't really know what they're on about, but yeah. We'll try that nonetheless. And then they want us to spend the money we are given at the start of the season and maintain a profit by the end of the year. That's not as easy as it sounds. I know you get a, a lot for Premier League football, but they've given us like they've given us a lot of money. You'll see how much money we've got. I mean, I, I'll probably put it in the headline to be fair in the start of the episode. One hundred and seventy million pounds is what they've given us. It's absolutely ridiculous. They'd also like us to lower the average age of the squad and would like the oldest players on small deals so we can get rid of them and offload them a lot easier if we need to. Also, having qualified for the UCL this year, we would like you to make at least the quarterfinals at the very least. That's a really hard objective, guys. I know, I know, I've set these objectives, but I've tried to make it as difficult as possible to try and make the like the forfeits more interesting. It's gonna be very difficult. I can't even emphasize how like not looking forward to. It. I've set these objectives myself. I'm not gonna change them now, and all almost be completed to avoid any forfeits. It's not gonna be fun this season. Last season was like a breeze, Premier League. But if the game turns it up and they get like ninety points, hundred points then we're in a difficult position to struggle to get top four, to be honest. But yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see what we get up to this season. It's going to be quite exciting. I know it doesn't really sound it. The objectives are somewhat similar to last season, but you can't. I can't really differentiate them to make the forfeits any different because I, I don't want to make it too like stupid or difficult where everything gets failed and I just look like a bit of a twat by end of the season. More so than usual, I should say. But um, the most the easiest one there looks like spend the money we are given because we have a super team by end of the year by it looks for it. So... Um, You'll probably see by the headline who we've signed already, the, the, the thumbnail. You're going to see who we're signing for that. But we'll see the forfeit as well. Failure to complete fewer than two of the objectives uh, in the entire season. Well, sorry, the entire Everton career mode will be over. Pretty much like last season, but there's quite a lot riding on this because we've got a lot of, a lot of value out of this first season. So we'll see what happens there. I sort of messed up what I just read. But it's all sort of meant the same. But if you fail to reach the top four... You'll be required to do 500 push-ups on camera's punishment. See, that doesn't sound odd either, but I can do about 50 in one sitting, and that's quite difficult to do 500. Not really looking forward to that if I fail. Um, if you do not make the quarterfinals of the UCL, then you will have to tell two of your highest-rated players in the new season. That's going to be Richarlison, Richarly Dad, I should say, and DCL. So, not very exciting, that. I'm not going to lie. I'm not looking forward to that. If you don't manage to complete all the objectives, then you'll have to do a face reveal. Again, not a massively challenging objective to do. I know I have to do it already, but I may as well do a little like forfeit to it because I'll probably not do all the objectives this season. Then potentially for the new season, we do a face reveal. Not that it's going to be important or anything like that. It's a tiny channel and no one gives a shit, but you still get to see Mowgli Mug as much as I do. So yeah, that'll be um, what we've got in the works for that. And um, yeah, the forfeits look quite difficult. Not going to lie, I don't really want the forfeits to happen. I don't want to do a face reveal yet. I don't feel comfortable to do it, but I will do it if it happens. And um, we'll get going with the first, um, what is it, pre-season tournament of the season. So, quick look at, well, we're just going to sim the start, I think. We'll see the transfer budget uh, increase to start off with. Look at that, £170 million. That is ridiculous. Oh my days. We're going to spend all that, I'm not going to lie. We're going to spend a lot on our player we've got in the um, thumbnail as well. Um, we'll adjust it quickly to make it over 170 because that's a little tag in itself. But look at that sort of money. That is ridiculous. I think sort of won the league, but that is a hell of a lot of money to improve this team. And we really need to as well because there's a few few key areas that I would argue need changing, such as Damari Gray on the left mid. I know he's like an OG and he, he were really good last season, but I think we need to, I think we need to sort him out to an extent. So... Um, as always, we'll sim the preseason tournament because I really don't care about it. I know that sounds bad, but I mean, I'm not bothered. Yeah, look at that already. Look, like we're already out of it, so that's not great. 
Um, don't forget to use substitutions. Interesting, Bernat. Bernat does end up moving to Barcelona in that move. Not that it's interesting to us at all, but we'll see if we can beat Inter. Potentially qualify through the tricky... Oh, yeah, we have. We've won 1-0. We've, we've qualified. Hey, not bad at all. We've got a loan offer for Harley Cooper as well, so we're going to... He does sound like a motorbike, doesn't he? Harley Cooper. I don't know if that's just me, but he sounds like a motorbike. But, yeah, we, we've, we've done all right with that. Um, we're through into the, to ne the next stage. I'm going to have a quick look at this squad. So, um, yeah, I need a new backup keeper, I think. I'm going to out, loan out Joao Virginia. I remember watching him play a couple of years ago for Everton. Might have been last season. He was iffy. He was iffy. He could be all right. We'll do Callum Sousa's contract to keep him happy as well. Um, ben Godfrey. I, I need to do his contract, to be fair, but that might be a different one because he's on a four-year deal already. We'll do um, N Nkunku, the left-back. I swear Nkunku's a different player. I think he's played for Spurs. But yeah, Mason Holgate as well. Yere Mean is in the final year of his contract. We're going to try and get as much as we can for him. So we'll offer him like a different wage, 80k a year. He'll accept that. We'll be able to transfer list him now and get a little bit more money for him. Maybe 20, 23 million. That'll be quite nice to see. We'll loan out like the young players again because we don't need him. We've got a good lot of squad depth. And with one of the signings we get in today's episode, we sort of replaced Yere Mina really comfortably. I mean, no one's going to buy Ryan Ashley, are they? Let's be honest. He's 20 years old. He's 6'4", 8. He didn't look like he's got a lot in him. But um, Braithwaite can go on loan. We need a replacement for Coleman. That could be in the next episode. I don't quite get it over the line this episode. Although we do have targets in mind. Um, we'll loan out John. Alan could do with a new deal, but we're going to hold off a little bit until the end of the season, I think. Try to get the most out of it. We'll sell Nathan Broadhead because we don't really want him. He's not worth it. Damari Green is a new deal as well. He's running out of um, years in his contract. 80k, an extra year. He's got three years now. It's not bad. We'll loan out this lad, Lewis Warrington. Decore, he needs to go. We'll offer him a new deal just, just for the shits and giggles, but... He needs he needs to go. He's he's not this he's not this club's quality. Not in the save anyway. Tom Davis as well is worth 15 million. He went up by three on loan at Deportivo Alaves. So I'll offer him a new deal. Get him a, an extra two years on his contract. Not bad at all. Andre Gomez can do without a new deal because the board are asking us to, to not offer new deals to big uh, high earners and like older players. We'll do a new deal for Martin Brown. I know you're not bothered about this. You can skip ahead to like nine minutes and this should be all over with. Um, 71 million release cost on Deli Alley. Yeah, no one's going to match that because he's, he's good, but he's not he's not worldy. Richarly Dad needs a new deal as well. We'll offer him uh, 140k a week. An extra two years on his contract as well. That's a four-year deal for him. We're going to sell Ellis Sims because he's not really good enough for the team. James Holloway really needs to go on loan, I think, this season because he, he's a, he looks like he's got a lot of talent. He's not going to get over DCL though, is he? And um, Moise Keane's still on loan, which I didn't realise. I'm not too impressed with that, to be honest. I thought he was going to come back. I might recall him or potentially buy a new player, but we'll see ahead, see if we can beat Ajax. And we can win the final against Boca Juniors. That is very nice to see. Um, Decore's surprise is getting transfer listed. Braithwaite's happy he's getting put on loan. I mean, Decore played like 20 games last season. That is not, not a lot. I think um, as soon as Renato came in, he was massively out of the team. And we've managed to win the pre-season tournament. What the, what the shit is happening? We won after losing off... Well, sorry, not, not only getting one point in our first two games. So, yeah, we've won four in a row in that. We've done all right. Um, we'll see the loan offers we've got. We've got an offer of DCL. We'll see Lamptey's potential. 77 rated. We could deal with him at right back, I think. I know we had him for Fulham. I don't really like getting the same players, but he's English and he looks qu he looks quality. We could go for Frimpong, because I know um, I've been recommended him in the comments, so I might go for Frimpong as well. I'm not sure yet. But we've got a big offer for DCL from Napoli. 70 million. I think I could get more for him if I wanted to sell him. Uh, I don't, fortunately, but I think we could get more anyway. But we'll have a quick look at the potential of the players we're, we're looking at and see who's a first-team quality player. So we'll have a quick look at free agents. Axel Witzel's not a bad one as a backup. Then I see this guy, Igor Zubeldia from Real Sociedad. And um, he, looks like a, he looks like a good player. 25 years old, and he's looking like he's going to be like quite irate. I think he's a 79 on ultimate team so if we, if we get him at like 79 or 80 rated he can play centre back CDM and centre mid so he can actually rotate him quite a lot that could be a very very promising bit of business love him rotational squad role he wants important we'll, we'll do it we'll do it we'll keep it we'll keep the boy sweet as they say and um, four year deal we'll offer five years try and get the most out of him get him till he's 30 we're never going to make it that far in this career mode but we'll try and get him till he's 30 63k a week he must be good to be asking that sort of money because that is a hell of a lot of money. And uh, we have indeed agreed a deal with him. So 
He's bald being agent, shakes a hand with us. And uh, so does Igor Zubeldia. What a signing that is. I, I don't know what rating is. We'll have, a, we'll have a look later on. We've got another bit of business to do while we're here. And um, I think I think we know who it's going to be. Musa DRB. I didn't realise he didn't have a real player face until I actually looked into it. That that doesn't matter. Well, I'm, I'm not I'm not too hung, too hung up on it. I'm not like uh, not like anal about it, but I would have liked a real player face when I see it. It's a bit weird. There's a few players on there we're looking at as well. We could sort of do within the team. A lot of good ones, but Musa Diabe is looking like the most promising. £52 million is what he's worth. We'll have to pay at least 75 I can imagine, to actually snap him up from uh, Bayer Leverkusen. But we've got £170 million to spend. £60 million offer, let's see if they do that. It'll be a £60 million man. It'll break the club record either way on £85 million. That is the same price that Tottenham played for Gareth Bale. But if he's cheaper than Grealish, that's all that matters to me. £72 million now, this one £85 million. Honestly, guys, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. We'd offer 75, 83. Lower it a little bit more because I still want, I still want some more players. We'll offer 78. See what they do. I'll call him the £80 million pound man anyway. And we've agreed the fee. Moussa Diaby is coming to Everton. We'll see the contract first because he might turn it down. It'd be very weird though since I spoke about him so much. And um, I mean, 84 rated, 23 years old. He has got three star weak foot and four star skills. So I could do with the. Little upgrades on them to make him maybe four star, five star, five star, five star sort of player. Try and make him a little bit more usable. He ain't got a real game face, which is disappointing, as I said earlier. But it's it, it's passable. He's a good player. He'll, he'll he'll replace Damari Gray, or at least if he's not great, he'll offer him good like positioning. Not position, sorry. He'll offer him good challenge, a good challenge for his position in the team. So uh, we've agreed a fee with that. We've agreed the agents' fees and everything. We've, we've got a good deal there for Musa Diaby. I'm really happy with it, to be honest. Looks like an absolute baller. Former PSG player, obviously by Leverkusen. Really, really good this season and last season. And I think I think we needed a player like that. 84 rated. Zubeldi is 81 rated as well. He's going to be a massive difference to this team. Currently the second highest rated central defender we've got. He's worth 24 million as well. Very nice bit of business there. Um, we'll put them on coaching plans as well, just while we're here, just to show that I do actually do that sometimes. To try and progress the players a little bit quicker than they would do normally. But yeah, we'll, we'll put him on a skill one, I think, because, I mean, his finishing's not bad, really. But his shot power's shocking, and so are his long shots. So maybe that's something we need to look at. He's already got great dribbling, but he needs five-star skills, in my opinion, to be sort of under Mario Gray's level. Zubeldia as well. Hey, that's a very nice card. That is a replacement for Alan right there, if I need one. I think I'm going to get another central midfield anyway. Um, but that is a very, very nice signing indeed. So um, after all that, Malarkey, we are going to have a look into some transfer offers we've got. Gone off for Yere Mina from Monaco. And Cuckoo's going to agree a loan deal with um, Fenerbahce. Goazis, or whatever they call from Turkey. They didn't want to sign Nathan Broadhead. We stopped offers for Indica because we got one from Monaco. They also offered money for Yere Mina, so I thought 20 mil, I'll accept it. And then for money for Vitaly Michalenko. I'm, just, I'm not having it. I'm not selling Vitaly Michalenko. He's an absolute diamond. Absolute diamond of a player. Really, really talented at such a young age. And he's Ukrainian. Not that that means anything. I'm not being all that political, but I think he deserves to, to play for Everton. We how good he's been. He's quite good in real life as well. So that's all we're going to go for. We, we have signed Moussa Diaby though, and they're asking about him. He is such a talented player in real life. I can't believe the sort of players PSG let go. They let, first let go in Kunku, and then they let go Moussa Diaby. And Kunku would fit perfectly in their midfield now in real life. And Diaby, you know, he's had a better season than Neymar has. So okay, guys, we need to wrap I think it's a very good signing, and we're moving on to the first game of the episode. So we are in the Community Shield, which I forgot about, to be honest, but apparently Brighton won the FA Cup. So good for them. And we've got them in the Community Shield. Very weird Community Shield. Next year... It'll be either Liverpool versus Chelsea or Man City versus Chelsea or Liverpool versus Man City. So um, that's that's the Brighton team. Pretty much their team in real life. Ostergaard plays them on loan in real life. He's on loan at a different club. I don't think they've actually signed anyone apart from Dennis Undev. Um, Duffy's the right back, which is weird. Basum is the centre back still. But Lamptey's on the right midfield. So we'll see what he can do against us. He's a right wing back after all. We do shake hands with him. We'll see our team as well. Couple of new players, well, a new player starting, as you can see. Moussa Diaby. The team starts Pickford in goal. Right back Seamus Coleman as the captain. 
Two central defenders, Ben Godfrey and Dicker and Mike Lenko as a left back. Midfield three of Renato, Sanchez, Alan and Deli Ali. And then a forward line of Richarlison, DRB and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. So very strong team we've got there. We'll see the team talk before the game. Pickford looks like he's giving it. And um, we'll start with the first half of the game. So 11 minutes in, Diabe's causing Shane Duffy problems already. Gets straight past him. Duffy tries to foul him. He skips past him, whips one in. DCL gets the ball down, hits it on the volley. But Sanchez makes a good save. But DCL misses a good chance to start off with to put us one goal ahead. So we'll pick back up in the 27th minute. Sanchez skips through midfield really well. Finds an out ball towards Diaby. He's against Duffy yet again. Gets past him. Duffy dives in. It's a good chance for Diaby. The goalkeeper makes a wonderful save. Sanchez, former Forest Green number one. We do get a corner there. We're looking for Diaby in the middle. Sanchez collects very, very comfortably. And Brighton themselves get a chance to counter now. So it's a good throw out to Alexis McAllister. Scottish and Argentinian attacking midfielder. McAllister picks up again. He's looking for the pass inside to Sarmiento. Gets past Coleman because he, he looks slow, Coleman does. Come back from pre-season overweight, bless him. Trossard plays the ball now. He keeps it really fortunately. Whips it in. And what is this defensive mix-up? Pickford doesn't gather it. And we're 1-0 down. Dennis Undev. That is woeful defending. Oh, dear. That is a worrying sign. I'm glad we've bought Zubelda because Endicca and Pickford have not covered themselves in glory there. I mean, Zubelda could definitely replace Endicca next game after a stupid mistake like that. I think Endicca's better than Godfrey, or just about better, but that was woeful defending. Nothing I could do about that. We are 1-0 down, though. It's just shit defending. It's really, really bad. Dennis Sundev, with his first goal this season, he might be his first goal for Brighton, to be fair. But um, they bought him from a Belgian Pro League team, I believe, and we are indeed 1-0 down. So straight from the kickoff, we give the ball away. Deli Ali, yet again. Trossard looking for the ball now, runs down the line. Coleman's nowhere to be seen. I hate the kick clash as well. Alan clears it straight back to Sarmiento, finds a pass to Undayev, who makes it 2-0. What the fuck is happening? Boys, what are you doing? You're all over the place. You're absolutely shocking. You're causing some real bad problems in the defence and we're 2-0 down already and it just goes to show how bad we can be defensively sometimes. Very, very disappointing. And yeah, we're 2-0 down in the cup. So, um, 54 minutes now. DCL finds a pass to Ali and it comes back out to the RB, but it's blocked by Duffy and they get away with it, Brighton. 65 minutes again. Damari Gray's come on now. He's looking for the pass through to Richarlison. Finds the ball. He takes a heavy touch. Sanchez clears it away. Back out to Sanchez, weirdly enough. Now it's Ryan Kent back into Renato, who gets tackled, still retains the ball. Kent comes down the line, looking for the ball back to DCL, who fires away to get us back into the game. Wonderful finish with the outside of the foot from the big man himself, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. The best aerial forward in the Premier League, in my opinion. That was a wonderful little bit of play by uh, Ryan Kent and Renato. Get us back in the game, though, and we'll pick back up. In the 80th minute, so Ryan Kent running down the line. Ryan Kent running down the wing. DCL finds him. Kent picks it up again. Basuma can't keep up. He's looking for a back stick shot. He should score. He really should score. That's a bad miss by Kent. You'll see the replay. Yeah, we should be scoring there. That's a bad miss. In the 86th minute, Brighton pick up the ball. We block it. Comes back out to Connolly, apparently. Plays it back towards Trossard, who shoots, bands it round Pickford, and we've lost the game. It's all done and dusted. We lose the game three goals to one, and that is woeful. Not just from me, but from the team as well. And um, as you can see, the full-time score, 3-1. I'm not watching Brighton lift this fucking trophy. It'll wind me up too much. You can already tell how wind up I am. I'm, I'm not having that. Um, Duffy is the captain, though, and he will lift the trophy. Look at the stats. Look at this is like football manager, you get FM'd in that sometimes. This is getting FIFA'd. This is ridiculous. We had twice as many expected goals, three times as many shots. I think we've had more passes as well. Ridiculous. Pickford was absolutely awful. I think that proves I need another backup keeper because Begovic isn't bad, but he's not he's not better than third choice quality. And uh, yeah, we weren't we weren't far off in passes either. So uh, we'll skip straight through to the menus. I've got Diego Reyna. I think he might be Claudio Bravo's regen, to be honest. I'm guessing. For a Chilean goalkeeper, um, we need we need to make a new scout, like a new scouting instruction. Get rid of left backs. We've got Michael Enko and Callum Stars. We need a new keeper, at least a backup keeper at the very least. I wouldn't mind a keeper to replace Pickford, but I don't think we're there yet. 
although Pickford has been woeful in the first game. Uh, we'll see some targets are already there. Gregor Kobal, Unai Simon and Aaron Ramsdale. But yeah, we're not going to sign any of them. Uh, more transfer offers now. Demore Gray's got an offer from Atletico Madrid. I don't want him to go. I like him too much. He's such a good player. He can play attacking midfield. He scored 10 goals last season and got 7 assists. He's had a good season. £20 million offer from Benfica. From I don't want to even negotiate that because I don't want to lose the chance of selling him. We'll try and loan out Gibson and then a £2.5 million offer from Antwerp for Ellis Sims. And we'll, we'll do that. I, I don't want him anymore. £2.5 million is plenty enough. We can sign a good regen on a free agent or probably for that fee, to be honest. But um, we have got another game coming up. The final game of the episode. We've only got two because it's a transfer special sort of thing. Uh, we have loaned out Gibson, as it seems to BSC Young Boys, because he's indeed a young boy. Not quite a child, but he's a young boy. You um, and now. we'll do the press conference. So do they think pressure's done to make Champions League? No, because we're the best team in the league. We won the Premier League last year. We literally are the best team in the league. And if we don't make top four, we win Champions League. I'm, I'm confident in that. Ultimate difficulty is hard, but not for me, because I'm a baller. No, I'm, I'm joking. I'm not. I'm not very good at FIFA. I'm just lucky. I've got a good team. Got a very, very good team, but I think we'll beat Wolves. Okay, guys, and uh, we will indeed start the next game me. with a little look into the uh, Molyneux Stadium. We see Briel Donald Mbolo and Gabriel from Arsenal walking through the Wolves team. That's quite a weird sign. I guess he's Brazilian, so he can speak Portuguese. Or is it Brazilian? They, it's like the same language, basically. Something to do with like, who took over who in like the 1700s or something like that. But um, yeah, we are at Molyneux. For a massive game against Wolves. We'll see our team before the game. Pickford starts in goal. 4-3-3. Right back Holgate. Centre backs Godfrey and Dicker and left back Michaelenko. Midfield three. Zubeldia, Sanchez and Ali. And the forward line of Richarlidad, DCL and Musa DRB. Not a bad team. Not a bad team. But yeah, uh, we've rested Alan this game. Given Zubeldia a chance. And we'll start with the first... Highlight of the game, so 16 minutes in, Sanchez picks up the ball, plays it back to Calvert-Lewin, who finds Richarlison, who finds a little gap off the post. Saar was beaten, all end up there, and they get away with one. So 37 minutes now, Adama's played through, plays it back towards four, now the former West Ham midfielder, and Pickford makes a wonderful save, low down to his left-hand side. Wolves do indeed get a corner, they cross it in front post, we do try and get it away, it comes off the Wolves man, and now DRB can break with all his speed but he's tackled that Neves with a wonderful challenge Neves plays it in now to Podence on the wing Mr. I can't shoot who crosses it back stick towards Briel Donald and Bolo Michaelenko somehow out jumps him and now we can break ourselves Ali's looking for the pass out wide to DRB who's got Kilman to beat he's had Kilman on toast already really gets past him quite well looking for the cross in the middle whips it in Saar misses it and Ali has his header cleared away comes back out now Sanchez has stayed down. That's quite worrying. Zubeldi plays it into DCL. He's going to have a shot just to get rid of the attack. And Saar makes a comfortable save. But Renato stayed down. Get up, Renato, please. No, he's down injured. No, please don't say you've done anything stupid. You're holding your knee. If he's on his ACL, I'm going to cry. I'm literally going to cry. I can't deal with that. He's the best midfielder in the Premier League. He's one of the best midfielders on, game, on the game just as an 80 rated. I can't. I can't have this. I, oh, he's injured. He's fucking injured. Oh, my God. Look at his card as well. He's so good. He's so, so good. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. We'll bring on Gomez for the time being. But I'm going to need a new midfielder at this rate. Honestly, it's going to be Gallagher or Ward-Prowse, by it sounds of it. But well, we've, we've lost Decore. And now we've just lost Renato Sanchez for like seven months. And I can confirm it's a seven-month Achilles uh, injury, not Achilles, sorry, um, ACL or RCL or PCL, whatever it is. I think it's an ACL or PCL injury. So it's not great. I think it's his anterior cruciate ligament anyway. But yeah, we're shafted. We, we're not going to win league this season now because of that. But yeah, boring first half. And we pick back up in the 60th minute as DCL finds Richarlison with a good through ball. We're looking for the back stick cross towards Diabe. First time volley and Jose Saar with a wonderful save to keep Wolves in the game. So pick back up a couple bit later in the game. 66 minutes. Diaby finds Ali. Calvert-Lewin turns his man, gets the shot away. But Jose, Jose Saar, the beautiful beard himself, the ginger model himself, he, he makes a good save. We do get a corner though. Richarlison's going to give it towards Diaby, the left footer. We're looking for DCL in the middle. 
try and swing it in towards him. DCL doesn't win the header, unfortunately. Comes back out, but it comes back to DCL, who does, in, in fact, bite at the second cherry. Wait. Bites at the second cherry. Second cherry bites. Some bollocks. I don't know the sayings. I'm not a football commentator. But DCL makes no mistake to put us 1-0 up. In the 82nd minute, it gets even better. Richarlison against Roman Saiz. Moroccan international gets past him, finds DCL first hand, left footed volley. What a finish. I was that is like Robbie Fowler in his prime, that. That is the best finish in the Premier League. Dominic Calvert Lewin. I mean, Richarlison did well to get past Saiz so easily. But look at this finish first time. It's wonderful. Off the cuff. What a goal. 2 0 up, and that is the full time score. Very well deserved. Two goals inside. The last 20 minutes inside 40 minutes either side and we, we, we indeed win the game quite quite comfortably i'd say it's a very very well deserved victory after quite a hard game against this wolves side and I, I can't say anything better about the team they had two shots we had eight we had five expected goals to 0 0.6 jose saw he had a wonderful game really really good game um in the just before just after half time diabe did a kickoff run and nearly scored i decided not to show it because the episode's already too long as it is but as you can see, 7.7 .7 for him, 9.2 for Richarlison and 10 for DCL. And Dicker with an 8 rating as well. Got an assist to add to his, uh, well, first Premier League home game, uh, sorry, away game at Molyneux. But that is all we've got for the episode. So um, great win nonetheless. We get an offer for Begovic from Brentford and we reject it because we're not selling him. And then we see the terrible news. Renato Sanchez is out for the fucking season. I've swore too many times. But I don't want to lose him. Not like that. That is just upsetting. At the at the very highest level, it is upsetting. It's all Ellis Sims as well, but who cares about that? I'm just depressed now. I'm literally, I'm mortified. I, I don't know what to say. Like, I, just, I, I didn't want to sign anyone else, but I'm going to have to now. I could get Kakare. I mean, I could get a gay. I could get Idrissa Gay, to be fair. Then again, Alan's not going to be able to play. I could get Carlos Soler. I could get... Zaver Schlegler, whatever his name is. But then again, he has just moved to Sociedad on the game. So maybe a bit unrealistic. Box, box midfielders, Danny Caballos, Pedri. I can't get Pedri or Bellingham. It's not realistic. I could get Sander Burge. He was recommended for me, but I have won the league, so I think I can get like potentially better than that. Thomas Lamar doesn't look bad. A little bit on the older side. 26. I know that sounds stupid, but he is. Uh, Paqueta, that'd be amazing. I might go for that, to be honest. Too Chimeni, that'd be a good one. But is he going to actually replace... Uh, Renato Sanchez because I don't want that I just want someone to fill the void while he's not there Conor Gallagher is sort of the perfect one because he's English as well Ward Prowse potentially for his free kick ability and set piece delivery I think he might be the one next episode to fill the void that we've lost there and it's just depressing we'll see the, the, the entire list Kakare as I say is one Nehouse is one he's not worth too much Solo is one as well they're all worth about 30, 40 million. Solo would be fantastic. His final 11 months as well. Could be a potential pre contract if we can negotiate that. Ezekiel Palacios wouldn't be bad. And I mean, this guy looks like the one. He really does. He really looks like he's going to be the one who we go for. He's not worth too much. Too too many is worth about 70, 80 million. So he might be a bit too much. Gavi would be good, but he wouldn't join us because we're not a big enough team, in my opinion. Not yet. Conor Gallagher would be perfect. And I think he might... It's, it's Gallagher or Ward-Prowse, it's a toss-up. Please let me know in the comments who you want. I'm thinking Ward-Prowse, but you guys might want Gallagher. So uh, we'll see what happens with that anyway. And um, quick look at the budget before we go. Only got about 30 seconds left now. And we'll see the calendar for the next episode. So we're back to four games next episode and the rest of the window. Away game against Burnley, a home game against New Boys Fulham, who did win the playoffs apparently. An away game against Leicester and then a home game to finish off against Manchester United. So uh, we're not going to do the Brentford game, but we'll do the United game without a doubt. And I really appreciate watching the new season. Please like and subscribe and um, I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you very much.